Attention Hampton South residents. This is a community notification of a new sexually violent predator in your area. Please stay tuned to the following short program for more information. Hi, I'm Technician Ron Hackett with the Denver Police Department. The Sex Offender Registration and Compliance Unit at DPD is responsible for the registration, monitoring, and tracking of all registered sex offenders and sexually violent predators who live in the city and county of Denver. Here's a brief history of sex offender legislation in Colorado. Our state laws trickle down from federal government mandates. In 1994, we had the Jacob Wetterling Act, which mandated that states would establish a sex offender list. Megan's Law of 1996 said that the public would have access to those sex offender registration lists. The Pam Lichner Act of 1996 stated that some offenders might have to have lifetime registrations. And the Adam Walsh Act of 2006 unified sex offender laws across the country. In Colorado, the legislature has determined that sexually violent predators, by definition, pose a higher risk to the community at large and therefore mandated that upon their release from the Department of Corrections, the community must be notified. Sex offender notification in Colorado happens in two ways. The first is passive and ongoing through the sex offender registration process, which is a list maintained by local police departments. The second way is active via community notification for those offenders determined to be sexually violent predators by the courts or by the parole board. Most sex offenders in Colorado are supervised by the criminal justice system in our communities. Most sex offenders engage in crossover behavior, which means they may have been arrested for one type of crime, but be apt to commit another. Many sex offenders have no criminal history at all prior to their arrest. There is no typical sex offender, but all tend to be deceptive, manipulative, and secretive. 80 to 93% of sex offenses are committed by someone known to the victim. Sexual deviancy begins in mid to late adolescence. Sex offenses are not impulsive. They are usually carefully planned, and most sex offenders are male. The community has a vested interest in helping offenders to be successfully managed in the community. Sex offenders have the same need for housing and employment as any other citizen. Any citizen who uses sex offender information to harass, threaten, or intimidate an offender will be subject to criminal prosecution. There are approximately 16,500 registered sex offenders in the state of Colorado. About 65% of convicted sex offenders are placed in the community on probation. The remainder are in the Department of Corrections or Community Corrections. Offenders may be caught for one type of offense, but be at a high risk to commit another type. Crime of conviction is only one indicator of risk. A sexually violent predator must register with the Denver Police Department Sex Offender Registration Unit every three months for the rest of their life. The offender's residence must be verified quarterly by the Denver Police Department. The full sex offender registration list is available by calling the Denver Police Department Identification Bureau at 720-913-6756. Convicted felons and those with multiple convictions are posted online at denvergov.org slash police. Remember, Sexually violent predators do not represent all dangerous sex offenders. The community notification process and sex offender registration are not a complete deterrent to sexual assault. Now, here's a look at the newest sexually violent predator living in Denver. Here's an overview of the registered sex offenders currently living in Denver. There are 2,372 total living within city limits. In Denver Police District 3, there are 361. Precinct 323 has 76 registered sex offenders. Of those, 46 have felony convictions and 30 have misdemeanor convictions. Jeremiah Nathaniel Houston is a sexually violent predator currently living in Denver. He's 37 years old and was born on May 10, 1979. He's a white male, 6 feet 3 inches tall, 227 pounds, with brown hair and brown eyes. He's currently living at 7101 East Oxford Avenue in the Hamden South neighborhood of Denver. Schools located within one mile of this offender include Samuels Elementary at 4700 East Yosemite Street, Southmore Elementary at 3755 South Magnolia Way, Thomas Jefferson High School at 3950 South Holly Street. Parks located within one mile of this offender include Eastmore Park, Southmore Park, Rosamond Park, Wallace Park, Goldsmith Gulch. Bus routes located within one mile of this offender include Route 65 South Monaco Parkway, Route 46 Union Avenue, and light rail lines E, 
F, and H. A brief history of charges against this offender. Sexual assault on a child. He's currently on probation and registered with the Denver Police Department on February 1, 2017 to 7101 East Oxford Avenue in the Hamden South neighborhood of Denver. Past charges against this offender include sexual assault, assault menacing, parole and probation violations, possession of a weapon by a previous offender, theft and burglary, assault to a peace officer, bribery of a public servant, attempt to influence. Jeremiah Nathaniel Houston has been determined a sexually violent predator after meeting the following criteria. Criteria 1, age 18 or older on the date of the offense, or under 18 and tried as an adult. The offender was age 20 at the time of the offense. Criteria 2, the crime must have been committed on or after July 1, 1997 and convicted on or after July 1, 1999. Crimes include sexual assault, felony unlawful sexual contact, sexual assault on a child, sexual assault on a child by a person in a position of trust. The offender was convicted on November 13, 2000 for sexual assault on a child. Criteria 3, the relationship to the victim was one of the following. Victim was a stranger to the offender, or the offender established or promoted a relationship with the victim primarily for the purpose of sexual victimization. The victim was a 14-year-old female. The offender was known to the victim. Criteria 4. Positive results are the passing of a risk assessment instrument administered by probation parole staff and a qualified treatment evaluator. Positive results include an assessment for the presence of a mental abnormality, a level of denial regarding the offense, treatment appropriateness and motivation, presence of sexual deviant interests. The offender was evaluated by the Department of Corrections Parole Board with positive results, determining him to be a sexually violent predator. Thank you.